Alright, what's up Hoops fans? Happy December! Today it is time for me to face the music. Uh, we're going to be talking about Orlando Magic Center Nikola Vucevic, who is having an amazing year. Now, I make a lot of NBA takes, a lot of predictions, a lot of statements about lots of topics, and most of them go according to plan and are pretty decent. Some of them go way wrong though, including this one that I made when I was on a podcast talking about the Sports Illustrated Top 100 Players in the preseason. Just take a listen. Are you, are you ready for uh, another take that I have on somebody that should be dropping out of this? Yeah, let's hear it. I don't think Vucevic belongs. Really? I don't think Vucevic belongs. Vucevic belongs. Yeah, so I gotta own up to that. Forget just big men. Nikola Vucevic has been one of the most productive players in the entire league. In fact, he's 11th in real plus minus right now, which is one of the best all-encompassing basketball statistics ahead of players like Steph Curry. And he's posting career highs across the board. So what has gotten into Vooch? Is it just Steve Clifford unlocking parts of his game? Is it he discovered something at 28 years old that he didn't have before? Is it just he's super motivated because it's a contract year and the Magic drafted the guy that everyone assumed was going to be his replacement right away? I don't know. So I took a deep dive into his two most recent games, did some film study, and I was looking for stuff that is new in Vucevic's game this year, and this is what I found. Okay, so let's first take a look at the Vucevic shot profile. And looking at this chart, yeah, it is very impressive. He's shooting better from every range this season. Some of these are by pretty significant margins, specifically that three-point bump from 31% to 42%. Now his shot frequency, he has exchanged some of those threes for uh, rim shots this season, which we're gonna talk about later. But other than that, his shot profile is basically the same as far as frequency, just the accuracy has jumped up across the board. So Vucevic added this three-point shot to his game last year, but has obviously, like we just discussed, become way more potent. Most of these are coming off of pick and pop. There, Aiden doesn't get out in time. The Augustine Vucevic two-man game has been really, really productive this year. Freeze right there. What kind of big man grabs the ball off of their shoestrings and come up shooting it confidently? Not a lot. Also, we know that he likes to bomb away from mid-range. Nothing new there. But shooting at almost a 50% clip from mid-range is really impressive. There's the two-man game with Fournier. Pops out. Also, close to the basket. He is not assisted on a lot of these. Really excels close to the basket. Has a ton of tricks in his bag. There are a series of fakes on DeAndre Ayton. Had him spinning around. Here we're going to see him uh, again posting up on Ayton. He can finish over either shoulder with hook shots, fadeaways. That's a nice shot with the shot clock winding down. A weakness in his game close to the basket is that he does not draw hardly any fouls. Is below 10th percentile in drawing fouls for a big man. He could have easily ripped through Aiton's arms there to draw a foul. Here he has a mismatch on Mikhail Bridges. Goes to the soft fadeaway. Could have tried to power through him, but did not. Now let's take a look at his other offense. So, he has been a major hub of the Magic offense. His touches are up. His assists are up, his turnovers have stayed the same, and his usage is up. He has become one of the best passing big men, big men I should say, in the NBA. So I think one of the reasons Vooch isn't shooting as many threes is because it's in the opponent's scouting report now. Look at how hard Nurkic closes out there, but there is where Vucevic has adjusted this year. He's able to drive those closeouts. Here he creates a nice corner look for Drell Martin that he doesn't knock down. Here he's going to go into a dribble handoff, the offense kind of stalls, he flashes at the high post and initiates the two-man game with Augustine. Now he can pass back to Augustine, he can shoot from there, or he can drive. He's got all of that in his bag, gets the favorable foul call there, I don't know. Here he is driving another mid-range closeout and unselfishly avoids the charge, finds a wound for the mid-range pop. He can also initiate offense from the post. And I've been really impressed with this. When he does not have a clear advantage, meaning a smaller guy on him or really good position, he looks to pass first. He's really patient in the post. Here he is on Nurkic, doesn't really have a clear advantage, sees the double team and unselfishly finds Augustine. Now, what big man in the NBA does this play that you're about to see remind you of? 
grabs the board, lumbers up the court, just initiates the offense, goes to dribble handoff, finds Ross. Um, maybe another Nikola? I don't know. Well, before you get too excited, he has improved his passing a lot, but still misses a lot there. Missed Ross with a wide open back door. So, he's become one of the best big man passers, but still has ways to go. Now we're gonna look at his defense. So, I can attribute a lot of this to the coaching improvements of Steve Clifford. The magic with Vucevic on the court are avoiding the two most productive, most efficient shots in the NBA, which are shots at the rim and shots from corner three. Also, this isn't new this year, but the Magic always defend, or sorry, they defensive rebound better with Vucevic on the court. And Vucevic is one of the best big men in the NBA at avoiding fouls. But I was a little disappointed. You're going to see it in a second. But basically, Magic opponents are just shooting worse. They're shooting below 50 percentile from every range on the court. So we're going to talk about the rim, where Vucevic might have some impact there. He's always been really good at verticality. When guys meet him in his chest, he goes straight up, uses that big frame. Here we're going to see McCollum try to, try to drive on him, and he just stonewalls him. Block. However, when guys come at him from awkward positions and he has to move his feet while maintaining verticality, he struggles. There's Josh Jackson. He kind of awkwardly falls backwards as he's trying to contest. Here, Ariza comes at him from an angle, and he doesn't even lift an arm. No contest there at all. And he's always been kind of slow reacting to guys at the rim. There you might expect a center to be able to get over and contest that, if not block that shot. Here you see Jackson again. He doesn't get over in time, doesn't react quickly enough. So I'd say he's an average rim deterrent. Now we're going to talk about his main pick and roll coverage, which is drop coverage. And basically what this means is when guys are coming off picks, Vucevic is going to sag into the paint really, really far. Even on guys like Elia Okobo, he gives him all kinds of room, and he just waltzes into that shot. So once again, I don't know if he's, maybe guys are just missing these shots, because they can get these whenever they want, from what I can tell. There Okobo had a shot, he decided, I'm just going to find my big man, Aiton, wide open at the free throw line, but he missed that too. And it becomes problematic when you face elite mid-range shooters like CJ McCollum, who has a very clean look right there. Now. It becomes even more of a problem when the pick is set above the three-point arc because Vucevic is not quick enough on his feet to get up to the level of the ball, so he just drops way back and hopes that his teammate can fight over the screen well enough, which Terrence Ross does not do right there. It gives up a wide open Lillard three. There Lillard has all day. Vucevic is just chilling in the paint. And we're going to see a bunch of these examples. Lillard actually made 10 threes in this game, most of them at the expense of Vucevic and Bamba drop coverage on pick and rolls. Freeze it right there. Look at how far off he is. You cannot give up that shot consistently versus the Blazers, which is something that could be a problem if Vucevic ever gets to the playoffs. Look at how far off he is there. So basically, Steve Clifford tried to make an adjustment and tried to have Vucevic step up, but predictably it just led to easy pocket passes, drop off passes to uh, Yusuf Nurkic. There he gets an easy layup. Here Vucevic tries to meet Lillard, and easy drop off to Nurkic again. And like I said, when there are elite ball handlers in the playoffs, this is gonna be a problem for Vucevic if the Magic continue to be in the playoff picture. Here we're going to see Vucevic is like, I got it, I got it, I got it, guys. Uh, nope. Just gets saved by a nice Jonathan Isaac block. Really impressive. But otherwise, Lillard blew right past him. Now, I don't want to end on a terrible note, so let's look at a good ISO play that he had on CJ McCollum. He's much better when guys try to ISO on him um, from the mid-range. But out in space of the three-point arc, he's just too slow. So, is he an all-star? Yes, probably based on his production, especially if he keeps it up. Um, the Magic, like I said, have been way better with him on the court. They're in the playoff picture. Now, I do have some long-range, um, long-term concerns, like I talked about, with the lack of foul drawing and with the slowness, um, both reacting at the rim and in pick-and-roll coverage. But I think Vucevic is really maximizing his, his athleticism and his skill set so far this season. 
I don't expect him to ever shoot better than he is currently shooting, so hopefully he can keep that up, but he's always going to be a bit of a defensive liability, especially if the Magic opponents start to shoot at a league average um, percent from the various ranges. So is there anything that Steve Clifford can do to help Nikola Vucevic expand his game? I, as I was watching these clips, thought of one specific thing, and we're going to look at a couple of other five men in the NBA. So here's the Celtics. The Magic don't run hardly any small, small pick and rolls using Vucevic as a spacer. Watch Horford go to the corner here in a Marcus Smart Kyrie pick and roll. We see Horford gets wide open for the corner pop. Vucevic has never attempted a corner three-pointer, which is amazing. The Hawks use Alex Len in this capacity. And Mike Budenholzer, everyone's offensive god so far in the season, uses both Brooke Lopez and John Henson to space the floor from the corners. So, so that is something that I can see that Steve Clifford could maybe implement into the Magic offense because Vucevic is pretty much always in the high post, always involved in every ball screen, and he could take a break, maybe catch his breath, and provide spacing from the corner. So was I wrong about Vucevic not being a top 100 player? Obviously yes, but everyone makes mistakes. Now do I think that he is the 11th best player in the NBA, like RPM would suggest? No, probably not even close. Like some of those uh, weaknesses that we talked about, his defense would probably be a major liability in the playoffs. I'm hoping that the Magic make it there. But um, subscribe to this channel. Let me know what other players you want to see video breakdown on. Watch my other videos. And peace.